Books can be mysterious. Do you love mysteries? How about mysteries that defy logic? Well, if you're looking for books with mysteries lurking in them, this is for you. You're about to get on the edge of your seat as you make guesses and analyze these fiery puzzles. These books have attracted many people's interests and are the source of many myths and legends. These books are the reason behind some stories that seem to haunt us today. Oh, it's nearly Valentine's Day. You'll discover some love spell and papery as we proceed. So it's the 20 most mysterious books in history. Number 20. Necronomicon if a book is wrapped in black plastic and barbed wire, it's probably not safe to read what's inside. Unfortunately, the cast of Fiddy Alvarez's adaptation of The Evil Dead is afflicted with more curiosity than common sense. As a result, another bunch of young innocents succumbs to the dreadful Necronomicon, a legendary book of demonic power. The Necronomicon is said to have been written by a crazy Arabian poet named Abdul al zared after he spent 10 years wandering around the ruins of Babylon and Memphis. al hazred went even crazy Easier after he finished what he called Al Azif. Depending on which story you believe, he vanished or was eaten by an invisible monster. Then in the 10th century, scholars translated his unholy manuscript into Greek. It was burned in the Middle Ages, and the last few copies ended up in dusty libraries, where they stayed until a few unlucky people found them in the 21st century. This found book raises doubts and the origins of humankind. However, the mysteries remain. Several writers in Lovecraft's circle were also influenced by the Necronomicon and the mythology that went along with it. August Derleth's stories had a lot to do with the Cthulhu mythos, and Clark Aston Smith is just a few examples. In what turned into a lively exchange of ideas, this small group of storytellers kept adding to Lovecraft's myths in their own stories. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Voynich Manuscript Cryptologists refer to the Voynich Manuscript as a cipher or coded pattern of letters. The book is slightly larger than a contemporary paperback and has 246 delicate pages of bonded vellum, or script-ready animal skin, was written in Central Europe in the 15th century. Although there is no index, it probably had foldouts since gone. The sequence of the pages may alter from how they are when the book was first released due to the gaps in the page numbers and evidence that it may have been rebound at some point. Short paragraphs with the sophisticated looping style of 25 to 30 characters go from left to right down the pages, broken up by in-depth pictures. Drawings of flora, planets, naked people, and astronomical symbols are included, along with doodles of castles and dragons, all of which are drawn in green, brown, yellow, blue, and red ink. A particularly odd passage depicts dozens of naked ladies bathing in a network and connected green liquid pools. Since 1969, the manuscript has been kept at Yale University's Benecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library. It bears the name of Wilfred Michael Voynich after the Polish book trader acquired it in 1912 from a Italian Jesuit library. He tried to get people to translate it, but alas, nobody took him up on it. Are you bold enough to take this up? Tell us in the comment section below. Number 18. The Book of Soiga Numerous cryptic writings have perplexed inquiring minds throughout history. While most of these enigmatic texts vanish over time, some have been kept. The books and manuscripts fascinate modern historians, cryptologists, and enthusiasts of the occult and the unknown. The Codex Gigas, a massive medieval bible purportedly written by the devil himself, and the Voynich Manuscript, an herbal manuscript written in an unintelligible coded language, are two of the most famous and enigmatic books ever discovered. However, many other mysterious books are less well known, but no less fascinating. One is the Book of Soiga, also called al Daraya, a Latin treatise on demonology produced in the early 16th century. This puzzling work's creator is unknown, but it's known that John Dee, a well-known English astronomer, mathematician, and occult philosopher, who served as Elizabeth I's advisor, bought the book in the early 1580s and devoted the rest of his life to trying to unlock its mysteries. Although it is clear that the Book of Soiga's weird reputation was the result of of historical ideas that were illogical and unscientific, some admirers are nonetheless convinced the book contains a doorway to some prohibited and secret information. What knowledge is contained in this book? Are you able to interpret it? Comment below with your answer. We'll love to interact with you. Number 17. 
the Rohonk Codex. An illustrated manuscript called the Rohonk Codex was found in 1838 at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Despite many attempts to decipher the document, neither its language nor its creator is known. The book is nearly 450 pages long and has about 90 cartoon-like images depicting Christian and combat-related subjects. The number of distinct alphabetic letters in the text of the Codex exceeds that of the archaic languages spoken in Hungary at the time and in the region. It's unclear if the text should be read from left to right or right to left. The paper used to make the codex was made in Italy in the 16th century, which is a fact. While some academics have spent years attempting to decipher the text and images of the codex, named after the Hungarian city of Rohonk, others believe it to be a planned fraud. Sadly, nothing has been established beyond a reasonable doubt. Forgery allegations of this book date back to the late 1860s, but none has been successful. The effort continues to decipher the code and resolve the Rohan Codex's riddle. A computer program or future researcher might reveal its secrets. Do you believe you'd be the coder? Comment below with your answer and we'll post it. Number 16. Popol Vuh the Popol Vuh Maya record is a priceless source of information about ancient Mayan mythology and culture. It was written in Quiche, a Mayan language, between 1554 and 1558 by a Mayan author or writer, using the Latin alphabet with Spanish orthography. It details the development of humanity, the deeds of the gods, the beginning and history of the Quiche people, and the succession of the rulers from the first ancestors to 1550. In the early 18th century, Francisco Jimenez, a parish priest in Highland Guatemala's Chicha Castanango found the original copy of the book. He translated it into Spanish and copied the original Quiche text, which is now lost. The Newberry Library in Chicago currently houses his work. The Popol Vuh is depicted in two 8-meter, 26-foot long stucco panels found in 2009 by archaeologist Richard Hansen at the pre-classic Mayan site of El Mirador, Guatemala. The panels confirm the Popol Vuh's antiquity and date around 300 BCE or around 500 years before the classic period fluorescence of Mayan society. The hero twins, Hunapu and Balanque, who were charged into the sun and the moon, and Balanque, who were changed into the sun and the moon, respectively, are included in the Popol Vuh to describe how the Mayan gods created the world. Thus, the panel certified Jimenez's transcription of the earliest known written account of the Mayan Genesis narrative. Number 15. The Lesser Key of Solomon S. L. McGregor Mathers conducted the first study and translation for the Key of Solomon, the king using old manuscripts in British museums. In addition to the original text, outlining specific instructions for spells and invocations, Mathers also includes the ancient fragment of the Key of Solomon, the Order of the Pentacles of Solomon, the Quibalistic Invocation of Solomon, and 15 plates full of images, seals, and charge. The Key of King Solomon is covered in two books that make up the customary division of the work. The workings of spells, conjuration, curses, and other magical works are explained in Book 1. Book 2 gives instructions on the suitable dress ceremonies for cleansing and other ways to achieve the gauchest objectives to the practitioner. Between these two books is a list of plates with several Solomonic pictures and secret seals such as the Mystical Seal of Solomon, the Solomonic Pentacles, and the Solomonic Mystical Alphabet, which reveal the procedures and prerequisites for summoning spirits and demons. The Lesser Key of Solomon is a modern grimoire that has gone through multiple editions with different authors and editors free to alter and translate the old writings and source material. Many people have put together their versions of this antiquated information, and it's vital to understand that the lesser key is made up of its contents rather than the actual book. Are you thinking of creating your version? Tell us in the comment section below. Number 14. Codex Seraphinianus a couple having sex transforms into a crocodile in the extremely rare Codex Seraphinianus, the weirdest encyclopedia ever. On the water's surface, I saw fish eyes from some strange monster staring at me. The coffin of a man is being ridden. These bizarre photos are accompanied by handwritten text that appears to be old but incomprehensible. I've just entered the strange world of the strangest encyclopedia, Codex Seraphinianus. Codex Seraphinianus, a 300-page work with hundreds of diagrams and graphs written in its own special and an unintelligible alphabet is akin to a guide to an alien country. First published in 1981 by publisher Franco Maria Ricci, it has been a collector's item. 
However, in recent years, its notoriety has suddenly risen due to a burgeoning online fanbase. With 3,000 pre-ordered copies already sold, a new and revised version from the Italian publisher Rizzoli is scheduled to appear on bookshelves on October 29th. A new generation of readers who grew up online and are anxious to investigate the fascinating and relentless outside world, as odd as it is represented in the novel, is drawn to the codex. Number 13. The Greek Magical Papyri we have gathered some charming love spells from the British Library's Greek Magical Papyri in honor of Valentine's Day. These charms are said to inspire desire and love, but more concerningly, they were meant to tie and draw the target person to the user. Some spells even went so far as to make the victim suffer. Nevertheless, this agony would vanish once the couple was reunited. The majority of the spells listed below are preserved in Papyrus 121, a magical handbook thought to have originated in 4th century Egypt. It was originally a roll more than 2 meters long and contained spells for various goals, including healing and binding, as well as obtaining success and protection. The magical papyri are full of magical words or vocus magical. These illegible words or syllable combinations are purported to have magical properties. This spell has certain enchanted phrases at the end and is said to be able to instantly win a woman's underlying love by calling upon the deity Albo. After reading these antiquated love spells, we would definitely like our Valentine's Day celebrations to be charmless after reading these antiquated love spells. In the centuries that followed, erotic magic continued to advance. This book contains mysteries, but keep yourself safe even after finding it. Number 12. The Great Omar one of the most celebrated books in the world, The Great Omar has been attacked during conflict and lost at sea, making it one of the unluckiest books ever to have existed. Omar Khayyam's Rubaiyat, also referred to as Great Omar, was a beautifully embellished and jeweled poetry. It was transported from London to New York on the tragic RMS Titanic in April 1912, but it was lost to sea after the ship ran aground on an iceberg. In the late 1930s, it was replaced with a replica that was equally stunning and pricey, but it did not last long. Unfortunately, a fire started by German bombers attacking the capital of England during the Blitz, this time destroyed the book. The magnificent binding for the great Omar was made by a man who tragically finished his life at the beach with his family, adding sorrow to the tragedy. It took Sangorsky two years of labor to complete the book, which was covered in over a thousand diamonds, including rubies, emeralds, and topaz. The book was 16 inches by 13 inches and made of 5,000 pieces of leather and 100 square feet of gold leaf. Sangorsky was quite meticulous. He even went so far as to have a zookeeper feed a rat to a snake so he could correctly capture the shot. He had used a real human skull as a reference. Could be disaster, be a curse on this book? Share your view with us in the comment section below. Number 11. The Grand Grimoire the Grand Grimoire is frequently recognized as one of the most effective Grimoires ever created. According to numerous stories, this Grimoire was created in 1520 and later found in a specific tomb of Solomon in 1750. Additionally, it is claimed that this Grimoire was composed in either Biblical, Hebrew, or Aramaic. The Grand Grimoire's reputation as a potent book of magic would have been strengthened by its alleged connection to the Biblical King Solomon and the supposedly old language it was written in. The four portions of the Grand Grimoire are purportedly housed in the Vatican's secret archives. Honorius of Thebes, claimed to have been under the devil's control, is credited with writing the Grand Grimoire according to tradition. However, one of the Grand Grimoire's most notorious chapters contains the alleged summoning instructions for Lucifer or Lucifuge Rofocale. A blasting rod is one of the tools needed for this ritual, and it will be used to strike Lucifer into subjection after he is called forth. A variant of the Grand Grimoire was created during the 18th century, when there was a boom in the creation of low-cost Grimoires in France. Even though the original Grand Grimoire, or a duplicate of it, was kept at the Vatican in secret archive, unsurprisingly, voodoo practitioners in Haiti continue to employ the Grand Grimoire extensively. Oh, and the book is said to be fireproof as well. Number 10. The Book of Black Magic and Pacts. Arthur Edward Waite originally titled his book The Book of Black Magic of Pax, later known as The Book of Ceremonial Magic. It was first published in a limited run in 1898, then in 1910, it was given the title The Book of Ceremonial Magic and made available to a wider audience. It's an attempt to document many different famous grimoires, explain the history behind them, dispelling many of the legends that surround them, discuss the theology contained therein, for example, posing the question of why good angels would be summoned 
to kill an enemy, and combine many different famous grimoires into a single system. A look at the occult, the Book of Black Magic examines ceremonial lore, magic, esoteric theory, and much more. It's one of the best overviews of occultism by one of the most important people in Western occultism and contains a significant number of magical spells and occult texts drawn from a variety of sources. A. E. Waite, sometimes known as Arthur Edward Waite, was a British poet and scholastic mystic who lived from 1857 to 1942. He co-wrote the Rider Waite tarot deck and was a prolific author on occult and esoteric topics. This and other vintage books are getting harder to find and more expensive. If you got your hands on a copy of the book, what would you love to do with it? Comment below and let us know. Number 9. Pseudomonarchia Daemonum Johann Weyer's book, Pseudo Monarchia Daemonum, is a short version of a grimoire similar to Art Gosha, the first book of the Lesser Key of Solomon. It lists demons and the rituals and times to call them. The Pseudo Monarchia came before the Ars Gosha, which is different in some ways. The Pseudo Monarchia has a list of 69 demons instead of the later 72. The order of the demons and some of their traits vary. Only in Pseudo Monarchia does the demon Prooflaw show up, and the demons don't have any sigils in Pseudomonarchia. It's a short version of a grimoire similar to Ars Gosha. Weyer called the manuscript he used as his source Liber Officorum Spiritum, or Liber Dictus Empto. Number 8. The Red Book Carl Jung began an extensive self-reflection during World War I that he referred to as his confrontation with the unconscious. The Red Book, a large, illustrated book he produced between 1914 and 1930, and in which he built the basis of his later views, served as the focal point of this investigation. The Red Book, Liber Novus, is a red leather-bound folio manuscript created between 1914 and 1930 by Swiss psychiatrist Carl Gustav Jung. Based on writings, journals, known as black books that Jung first composed between 1913 and 1917, it describes and offers commentary on the author's psychological tests conducted between 1913 and 1916. Despite being regarded as Jung's most important work, it wasn't published or made available for study for a very long period. The illuminated manuscript, a rare combination of calligraphy and painting, has been compared to William Blake's The Book of Kells. Only a few people have ever seen the Red Book, even though Jung thought it to be his most significant work. After almost 80 years of construction, it has now been made public. The Red Book's translated text, as well as Sonu Shamdasani's preface and annotations, were included in a reader's edition of the book at Norton, also issued in December 2012. Number 7. Ars Notoria one of Clark's collections includes a fairly unremarkable 1657 pocketbook that reveals an intriguing mystery. The fifth and last section of the Lesser Key of Solomon, an anonymous grimoire from the 17th century, is titled Ars Notoria. It's noteworthy that the words grimoire and grammar share a common root with the old French word grammare, which means magic or sorcery and was occasionally used to designate the Latin language work. Words themselves were seen as possessing arcane and mystical qualities at a time when Latin was the language of scholarship, and their readership was restricted to an exclusive few. The Clavicula Solomonis is also known as the Lemigiton, or the Lesser Key of Solomon, was initially published in the 17th century. Still, the author stole ideas from several works published in the preceding century, including Johann Weyer's Pseudomonarchia Daemonum. It quickly rose to prominence and is still one of the most read demonology texts. The Trinity's invocation and the use of the characteristically European terminology like Marquis for level of demons placed the book's original content, according to legend, well into the Christian era. The text was written as far back as the 14th century. The book's final section, Ars Notoria, features several prayers and orations intended to call upon angels, sharpen the mind, and boost its mental faculties of recall, stability, and eloquence. Number 6. The Munich Manual Demonology, necromancy, and illusionist psychological and divinatory practices. In 1998, under the title Forbidden Rites, a necromancer's manual of the 15th century, Richard Kiekhefer updated the manuscript's text. Currently, the grimoire is kept in Munich's Bavarian State Library. It fully examines the text and its setting and is written in Latin. 
Although you might initially think this book deals with demonology and has much to do with magic, others refer to what you could call a spell book as a recipe book for magic. As was already mentioned, there were three main categories of spells. Psychological, these spells focus on the victim's humanity and frequently enable political influence, emotional manipulation, or simple willpower over others. Divinatory, these spells reveal the past and present to uncover hidden information. Illusionist, also referred to as glamour magic, these spells enable the sorcerer to make their target to see whatever they choose. The book also concentrates on black magic rituals such as exorcisms and summoning demons in addition to these spells. The Digital Amber translated one of these ceremonies that instructs one on how to call upon spirits. Based on the context of the poem, it is assumed that this summoning magic was used for adversarial spirits such as demons, ghosts, and other beings. Number 5. The Book of Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage S.L.M. Mathers took a French manuscript from the 1500s and turned it into this amazing grimoire. This book has greatly impacted modern ceremonial magic and is often said to have been Aleister Crowley's main source of inspiration. Abraham of Würzburg, a Kabbalist and magic scholar, talks about his search for secret teachings would led him to Egypt, where he met the magician Abramelin, who taught him about his system. The process starts with many months of cleansing. Then, good and bad spirits are called upon to help the person achieve some very worldly goals like getting treasure and love. The key to this is a set of amazing magic squares, which are sigils made up of magic words that can be read in more than one way. People say these diagrams have no power unless they are used in the right ritual setting by an initiate. Mathers wrote many notes about these words and how they might come from Hebrew, Greek, or other languages. Number 4. Codex Mendoza the Codex Mendoza is an Aztec book that is thought to have been made in 1541. It tells the history of the Aztec rulers and their conquests, as well as the day-to-day -day life of Aztec society before the Spanish came. The Codex is inscribed in the Nahuatl language with traditional Aztec pictograms. The text is written in Nahuatl and a Spanish translation and explanation are included. It's named for Don Antonio de Mendoza, the ruler of New Spain and a major supporter of native artists. He oversaw the building of the building. Mendoza knew the conquest had destroyed many native artifacts that ended the craft traditions that had made them. When the Spanish crown told Mendoza to show proof of the Aztec political and tribute system, he asked skilled artists and scribes who were learning at the Franciscan College in Tlatelolco to meet in a workshop under the supervision of Spanish priests and make a copy of the document set for him in the King of Spain. The picture book they made is called the Codex Mendoza. It has 71 pages made of Spanish paper that are 20.6, 30.6 centimeters. The document is made in the style of the people who made it, but it is now bound with a spine like European books. Number 3. The Story of the Vivian Girls in 1973, a huge but strange discovery was made in Chicago. Nathan Lerner, a photographer and designer, rented a room to an old man named Henry Darger, who lived from 1892 to 1973. Darger moved out of his apartment and into a home for old people. When Lerner was getting ready to clean out his room, he found a lot of writings, pictures, and papers piled up high all around. Henry Darger had always lived by himself. He was left without his parents and put in a home as a child. As an adult, he did menial work in Chicago hospitals. He had only one friend who eventually left Chicago and he spent most of his time when he wasn't working alone in his room. Partly because he was lonely he didn't have much to do every day and probably also because he had a hard childhood. Darger began to build a huge fantasy world. He started writing a huge book about war and the suffering of innocent children around 1910. It was referred to as the story of the Vivian girls in the realms of the unreal and it was about the Glandico Angelinian war storm that the child slave rebellion caused. The title's length reveals how long the book turned out to be. It was 15 volumes long and had over 15,000 carefully typed pages. Isn't that wonderful? Number 2. The Picatrix Picatrix is the Latin name for a 400-page book about magic and astrology that was originally written in Arabic and called Giyat al-Hakim. Most scholars think it was written in the middle of the 11th century, but someone has made the case that it was written in the first half of the 10th century. The title in Arabic means the goal of the wise or the aim of the sage. During the 13th century, Arabic work was translated into Spanish and Latin. In Latin, it was called Picatrix. The book's author is sometimes called Picatrix, which is the book's name. Picatrix is a collection of older works on magic and astrology that are put together in a new way. One of the most important ways of looking at it is that it is a handbook of talent 
talismanic magic. Another researcher called it the complete explanation of celestial magic in Arabic. The work was based on Arabic texts on Hermeticism, Sabianism, Ismailism, astrology, alchemy, and magic that were written in the Near East in the 9th and 10th centuries AD. From Marsilio Ficino in the 15th century to Thomas Campanella in the 17th century, it had a big impact on Western esotericism. Simon Foreman, Elias Ashmole, Richard Napier, and William Lilly touched the British Library manuscript. Number 1. The Codex Gigas the Codex Gigas, also called the Giant Codex, is the largest medieval manuscript. It was made in the Benedictine Monastery of Podles in Bohemia in the early 1300s, now the Czech Republic. It's also called the Devil's Bible because it has a full page of illustrations of the devil and because of a story about how it was made. The largest medieval manuscript is 92 centimeters, 36.2 inches tall, and 50 centimeters, 19.7 inches wide, and 22 centimeters, 8.6 inches thick. It started with three 320 vellum sheets, but 8 were taken out later. No one knows who took the pages out or why, but it seems likely that they had the rules for Benedictine monks upon them. The codex weighs about 75 kilograms, 165 pounds, and the vellum is made from the skin of 160 calves or donkeys according to some sources. The Latin Vulgate version of the Bible is all in the codex, except for the books of Acts and Revelation, which were from a version before the Vulgate. Also included is Isidore of Seville's Encyclopedia. Etymology Josephus's Antiquities of the Jews, Cosmos Prague's Chronicle of Bohemia, various tractates from history, etymology, and physiology, a calendar with necrologium, a list of brothers in the Podlace Monastery, magic formulae, and other local records. Latin is used to write the whole thing. Which of these 20 most mysterious books in history would you love to get a hold of, and what do you intend to do with it when you get it? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos.